Hello, this is Greg Griffin with Harnett County Schools Human Resources. I am going to give you some information about the residency license program that we have as an alternative uh, pathway to licensure in North Carolina. You may be familiar with what this used to be called, and that was lateral entry. I came in with a lateral entry license back in 2001, and many people I know you were familiar with that term, but lateral went away last year, and now we have residency license instead, which is similar but there are some differences and i'm going to try to talk about those in this short video today we know that people that did not go to school to be a teacher have a lot to offer and so we are very interested in people that have a degree in any area from an accredited college or university um, when it comes time to recruit new teachers so hopefully this video will be very helpful so what is a residency license well this is a license for people that did not go to school to be a teacher, like I was just saying a minute ago, um, but who have a degree in another area from an accredited college or university. The residency license, if you are eligible for one and you secure a job teaching in North Carolina and you apply for the license and you get it, is good for one year with the option to renew it twice within a three-year period if you need to while you satisfy the requirements that come with the license, which is coursework and uh, testing in many cases. All right, so who qualifies? To apply for a residency license, you would need to have a teaching job, but you would also need to have, in most cases, a 2.7 GPA um, at a minimum. Uh, in, in most cases, now this is going to ultimately be up to the college or university that you apply to, whether or not they accept you, but DPI has advised the EPPs, is what we call them, as you'll learn in this video, uh, educator preparation programs, to require a minimum GPA of 2.7 from your undergraduate coursework to admit you into the program. Okay, so let's say that you want to teach middle grade science, okay? You would need to have 24 hours of science classes on your transcripts from your undergraduate degree in most cases, or a relevant degree. Um, there is a coursework requirement for everything. It's a little bit different for EC and K through six, but we will be happy to analyze your transcripts and take a look at those and let you know what you would or would not be eligible to teach based on coursework. Now, um, some people have a degree, let's say you have a degree in English like I did, but you want to teach middle grade social studies. Another way that you could qualify for a residency program would be to study for the teaching exam for that area, the praxis um, test that goes with it, take that examination and pass it, and then you would qualify for the residency program. So you could take the testing up front and we can talk with you about that and answer questions. Um, if you have them, I'm gonna give you an email at the end of this presentation where you can email your questions and we will be glad to answer those for you. And then any other requirements that are there for anybody that wants to teach, any other pre-service requirements would need to be met. Okay, so what are the steps for residency? Well, the first thing is that you would need to meet the requirements that I just talked about on the other um, slide, the GPA requirements, the coursework requirements, um, the degree from an accredited college or university. Okay, then you would need to have a job. You would need to go ahead and apply for a teaching position with Harnett County Schools in the area for which you qualify. Um, there are several people in my department that will be glad to help you learn what you would qualify for or what you don't qualify for so that you can apply for the correct positions. So you would need to get a teaching position. Um, in most cases, you cannot be residency without the job. You have to have that. You can't just be residency on your own. You have to have the recommendation of Harnett County Schools when you go to apply. Yes, we have offered them a position, so therefore they can go ahead and move forward um, with their residency application. Okay, so you get the offer of employment from us after you know you're eligible, and then you would enroll in most cases in the educator preparation program after the offer of employment has been made. Now, sometimes this is all going on concurrently. It's kind of a complex and overlapping um, system, 
but you can't be residency without the job and you can't have the job ultimately without the residency program either. So it kind of all goes together. But in most cases, this would be the order of steps. Okay, now I want to talk about the form RL because this is something that we can't really talk about enough for residency um, candidates and teachers. Um, after you've received your job offer from Harnett County Schools, after you've been working with us and we've looked at your transcripts and we've, we've told you that you're eligible and you've reached out and you've applied and you've interviewed with the principal and they've given you a job, now we have to deal with the form RL. So this is a residency license verification form. This is a form from DPI, the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. And the top part would need to be filled out by you, the teacher candidate, of everything above the dotted lines there. And then we have like a double form at the bottom. Um, the designated LEA, that would be Harnett County Schools, if you get a job with us, will need to then fill out the bottom right of, uh, corner of the form and then you would take the form to the university that you applied to for your residency program. And I'm gonna show you in just a minute how you can figure out which schools offer which programs so that you would know which school you would need to go to. Um, you would take that to the university then and the university would fill out the bottom left and then it would need to come back to Harnett County Schools Human Resources where our licensure, licensure, spe where our licensure specialist could then apply for your license, but we would need the form filled out by the three parties. And then this is the same form that we would need to renew each spring if you need another year to work on your residency coursework or your testing, we could renew your residency license twice. Um, but each time we renew your license, we have to ha go through the process of the form again. We have to renew the form. You've got to fill out the top again. We've got to fill out the bottom right. And the university has to fill out the bottom left. So this is a form that we're going to need to be very familiar with if we're going to pursue the residency pathway. OK, so then what happens? All right. Well, you would start teaching with, with your residency license. You would be on the same salary as a teacher that went to school for education. You would make the same amount of money, but you would have the expectation that during your first three years, hopefully less because you can complete a residency program in less than three years. But during those first three years, you'd be working on the, the coursework that you lack to be a fully licensed teacher. You would have three years to do that, three years to satisfy your testing requirement. Okay, so your university that you're in the program with would provide pacing guidance for you during those three years. They're going to say that you need to take a certain amount of classes each semester. Um, so they will pace you. Harnett County Schools, we won't pace you. We'll check in with you and we'll be there to answer questions and things. But the university will tell you, OK, this is when you have to have this class com completed. This is when you need to have your testing completed. So they'll be the ones that will pace you. OK, I've already talked about how the form RL has got to be resubmitted every spring, that the license needs to be renewed. And we know that you didn't go to school to be a teacher. So we will provide you with a lot of support through our beginning teacher program, which I'd like to talk about for just a minute. OK, we're not just going to leave you alone with the kids um, without any training. We know that you didn't go to school for this. And so we're here to support you. Um, I am one of four recruitment and retention coaches in the county. Um, I have six schools where I go in and work with teachers. Whatever school you're in, you will have a district level recruitment and retention coach that will come around and check on you from time to time and provide support to you with just about anything that you need it with. Licensure support, classroom management, lesson planning, um, parent communication, whatever it is, we're here to help. You will also find that um, every school has a lead mentor that will help you uh, quite a bit. They will offer after school meetings that you will be required to attend that are support sessions um, that happen to be a licensure requirement too, by the way. And every school in Harnett County also has an instructional coach, which is awesome. And they are very gifted and talented and they can come around and they can help you with uh, classroom management, lesson planning and much more. 
Um, every beginning teacher, we call them BTs in Harnett County, receives orientation or and or training before entering the classroom. So we won't put you in the classroom without any kind of orientation or training. You will also be assigned a personal mentor, which is another teacher, usually that teaches in the same area as you, um, or that's very close to you in terms of proximity, like your next door neighbor or another teacher across the hall that will check on you and meet with you and answer your questions. And then every teacher in Harnett County, whether they're veterans, beginning teachers, or uh, international staff, are given the opportunity to attend lots and lots of free professional development opportunities all throughout the year and even through summer break. And then our residency teachers, we are very proud to say, are given two valuable opportunities to observe master teachers um, for an entire day. So we will send you to um, a school where you will get to shadow an awesome teacher for an entire school day. And we have been told that that is one of the most meaningful learning opportunities that we provide for our residency folk. Okay, so um, will I have a residency license forever? No. Nope. Once you've completed all the requirements that are outlined by NCDPI in your licensure requirements letter, um, your coursework, your um, satisfactory evaluation, whatever's on the letter, once you've completed your coursework and your testing and you've passed all your licensure testing exams, if they exist for your area, um, and you receive the recommendation of the university that you went to for your residency program, and you receive the recommendation of us, sorry about that, I was getting ahead of myself, and you receive the recommendation of us, then we will convert your residency license to a standard professional license. And that could happen before your three years, but you won't convert to a, a clear continuing license like our veteran teachers have till at least three satisfactory years of teaching have been completed. Everybody in North Carolina has to complete three successful years of teaching before they have a clear continuing, um, what we call an SP2 license. So I have thrown a lot of information at you. I wanna leave you with two important links. The first link is where you would go to look at the, um, to look at the job listings in Harnett County and to begin your online application. If you are interested in teaching with us, in any capacity, you would need to go ahead and start working on your online application. Uh, you have to upload a lot of documents in there, official transcripts, uh, test scores, resumes, references. It's time consuming, so you need to go ahead and start working on that. And then the second link up there is where you would go to peruse the list of approved educator preparation programs, or EPPs, that offer the residency program that I've been talking about for the last few minutes, okay? So if you have any questions, and we expect that you probably will, you can send them to Harnett Hires at harnett.k12.nc.us. We are here to help you with the hiring process, with the licensure process. Um, we want you to come um, work with us in Harnett County where we inspire learners to be leaders. So um, let us know what questions you have and best wishes.